Hello everyone, let's turn this raw file into this final image with just a bit of Photoshop. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link you can find in the description of the video and now let's jump into it. Here we have the raw file opened up in the camera raw editor. At first you might think this is way too dark to restore any details, but we can do quite a lot of things here. First off, let's start this by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. I'm doing this because this will already bring up the darkest parts just a little bit, but it will also introduce some saturation to this image and that's exactly what I want. Now I'm going through the basic tab real quick. Before I'm adjusting the white balance, I want to get a better overview over the image. At the moment that's a bit hard since it's still a little bit too dark. So to change that, I want to bring up the exposure first. I don't want to bring it up too much, otherwise I can't save the highlights anymore. And that's especially important in this bright area. But I think this is a pretty solid start. Now to get back details out of those brighter areas, we simply need to bring down the highlights. I recommend not to go too low, otherwise it might look a little bit weird, but we can go rather low like this without much problems. Okay, looking much better, but we can still tickle out a little more detail from the darkest spots by just lifting the shadows. And this will probably be the biggest change for the same effect we could try lifting the blacks and thus we also get rid of that heavy underexposure in the near foreground. At this point, if there's still a bit of underexposure left, I don't think it matters that much, but Overall, the image looks quite well, and you can also see that looking at the histogram. However, I think we can bring down the brightest parts a little more by just bringing down the whites. Perfect. I do want to have a soft look overall, but first I'm going to introduce some texture to just sharpen those smaller details. And for the soft look, just bring down the clarity a notch. And we can also bring down the dehaze. Just keep in mind, bringing down the dehaze will make the image brighter. But this is looking very, very good. Now all that's left to do is to just bring up the vibrance. And now from this point on, we can work on the white balance. So instead of turning the temperature up and just introducing those heavy, warm sunset tones, I actually want to bring the temperature down a notch just right about here. And the reason for me to do that is I want to have a warm area just around where the sun is setting, while the top and the bottom part still have this very, very strong blue color cast. I think this matches quite well in this scene and I want to work with that. So with the base settings set up, we can now focus on some masking. Let's head into the masking panel. And first I want to make the sky a little more interesting. So I'm trying to use a simple sky selection. As you can see, the camera raw editor can make a pretty good selection. I still want to tweak it a little bit. I want to make the top part of the sky darker. So I don't want to affect the center here. This means I'm just going to say subtract and choose a linear gradient and just create a linear gradient like this. I basically want to change all those blue color tones up here without affecting the warmer tones at the bottom. So with this mask, what I'm doing is to just bring down the exposure and making this area darker will also make those blue color tones more intense, which is exactly what we need here. I do think I want to add one more sky mask right away. And again, I'm making use of that subtract function using a linear gradient, but this time I'm going a little further up the sky because the higher I go in the sky, the darker I want it to be. So this is looking pretty good. Let's bring down the exposure. Just like that, perfect. So at this point, I think we're done with the sky. Now let's work on the foreground. Here I'm using a simple linear gradient and I just want to cover all those plants right here. And what I want to do with them is to just introduce some clarity, which will just give them a lot more detail. Now, one more mask I want to add, and that is a radial gradient. So I'm going to create a rather big one like this. I'm making sure it's overlapping the trees on both sides. And I'm also placing it right above the sun. And I want to introduce some 
kind of glow to this area. So what I'm doing here is to very, very gently bring down the dehaze. I really only want to have a very subtle amount of glow. And at the same time, let's bring up the temperature, introducing some more warmth to this area. And for some even stronger color tones, I can play around with the tint, raising it slightly, just like that. All right, but I think this looks good so far. So we went from this scene to this scene with just a bit of masking. I'm quite happy with how things are looking, so let's continue doing a little bit of color grading. I'm starting in the color mixer where I want to adjust the saturation a bit. This means I want to bring up the yellow saturation and I also want to bring up the blue saturation. Since those are the main colors for this image at the moment. I do think I also want to change the luminance of the blue tones, bringing it down and thus just making the, the top part of the sky a little darker. This is looking great. Now, the split toning. Again, this is where we really can transform the color tones. So let's start with the highlights. Of course, we are working with the sunset image and this means we want to keep the highlights warm. So let's set up the hue first. I'm going with a very reddish color tone for the hue. And now, depending on what you like, you could bring up the saturation all the way. This works quite well in this case. But for this image, I don't want to push it that hard. So instead, let's just go halfway up. I think that's good enough. And I also want to add some warmth to the midtones. So let's set up the hue here as well. Maybe going somewhere in the orange range and bring up the saturation just a bit. That looks great. Now, the highlights do look quite nice with this warmth, but we want to have some blue tones left in here. And this is where we want to work on the shadows. Here, we're going to set up the hue to something cold like this and just raise the saturation just a little bit. And that's it for the split toning. Let me deactivate it so you can see the difference from before to after. Again, it's a rather minor change, but it looks so, so much better. I do think I want to head into the calibration tab. Here we can adjust the color some more. I want to bring down the blue primary hue, which will make the red tones a little more intense, but we need to be careful because this will also change the color of the foliage. So we don't want to make this, too this effect too strong, but this is looking good. Now let's also pump up the saturation here. Perfect. Looking really good so far. At this point, I think I want to use some vignetting. So let's open up the effects panel and just bring down the vignetting slider. Wonderful. Now all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and then increase the amount of sharpening. Perfect. And at this point, we are done with the raw adjustments. So here we have the original raw file and we went from this to this. So much, 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 much better. Of course, we can still do a few things in Photoshop. So let's open up this object. What I want to do first is to just make those plants in the foreground just slightly brighter. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay since I want to dodge and for the dodging of this area, I'm making use of the TK panel plugin because it just saves a lot of time. What I want to do here is to target the highlights of this plant. And I can do this using the Lights 2 mask, for example, which I'm applying as a layer mask on the overlay layer. What I can do now is to grab the brush by pressing B, set the foreground color to white since I want to think make things brighter. And let's raise the opacity of the brush a bit. And then I'm just going to paint over this plant. And by doing this, I'm just giving it some more attention. Perfect. Don't want to overdo it. I think we should keep it really simple here. Next up, I do want to make the sun a little more prominent. So let's add another layer and switch the blending mode to hard light. Again, with the brush active, I'm holding down the Alt key and just click somewhere on, those, on this sun star because I want to pick up this exact color tone. Let's maybe pick up this one right here. 
Um, I do think I want to make it more saturated, so let's bring that point to the right. And let's bring down the brush opacity to around 10%. Now, what I'm doing with this brush is I want to make it smaller. And now just brush over the sun once or twice, which will add a really cool glow effect. This is looking great, but I want to change the foreground color, making it a lot brighter by bringing that point to the left and make the brush smaller. And now I'm going to just make this point in the center very bright by brushing over it a few times. Okay, let me deactivate the layer so you can see the difference from this to this. Awesome. Now let's create another layer and this time use the soft light blending mode. Make the brush a lot bigger and let's slightly bring up the brush opacity and again switch the foreground color to something more saturated. Okay, now I'm just going to use one brush stroke right there in the center. And this will add some very subtle but very impactful glow effect. Perfect. What I want to do next is to bring some more warmth to this image. For this reason, I want to make use of the Nick Collection plugin. So that means I first want to merge everything into a new layer hitting Shift, Control, Alt, E. So let's head into Filter, Nick Collection, Color FX Pro 4. Again, this is a paid plugin, but it saves so much time and just has some really, really helpful effects. So on this image, what really works well is the Brilliance Warmth effect. Right now it doesn't do much, but we need to bring up the warmth to change that. And I'm going to bring it up quite a bit here without losing too much of those colder colors up in the top area. I think this is looking pretty good. Maybe let's also bring up the saturation a bit, just like that. And once we're done, let's hit okay. All right, that looks much, much better. I do think I need to enhance the glow a little more. So let's create a new layer again and choose the hard light blending mode. For this glow effect, I want to use the color of this area. So I'm holding down Alt key again and just click in here to pick up this color tone. So let's see, I think we don't need to lower the brush opacity. What I want to do is to just kind of overlap those trees with the brush and paint in once or twice to make it look like they get hit by the last sunlight. Perfect. And at this point, I want to add one more Brilliance Warmth effect from the Nick Collection. So again, let's merge everything and apply the same effect as before. I do want to bring down the saturation this time, however, otherwise it might be too much. And let's play around with the warmth as well. So this is looking rather good. So let's hit OK. And that is it for editing this vibrant, colorful sunset image. I hope this editing process was helpful and interesting. Of course, as always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. I will gladly answer them. And thank you so much for watching this video.